Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have the picture of the pursuit. Sammy, right, this subject's gonna kill somebody. Oh! We got him, we got him. They're down in the ditch. Here. Come on, come on, keep going. Look around. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh man, we need some help. Because desperate criminals. <laughs> Use desperate measures, no matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking video. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, it could mean disaster. He's gonna run away, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. You know, a store like this used to be an easy target. Open 24 hours, one person alone behind the counter, usually too frightened to be a good witness. Then the video camera came along, and the cops had a new kind of evidence. And criminals learned that crime doesn't pay, especially when you do it on tape. So sit back and get ready for a brand new lesson in crime and punishment. Los Angeles, California. This geo prison was carjacked almost an hour ago and is still going strong. This pursuit has been going on a long time, high speeds on surface streets and freeways, and this guy is just showing no sign of letting up. Tonight, local police forces are stretched thin, covering the Democratic National Convention. So it's up to the highway patrol to run the suspect down. But the CHP has completely taken over this pursuit. The carjacker is no inexperienced punk. He's 40 years old and a repeat offender. Under the three strikes law, a conviction would mean a minimum sentence of 25 years. He knows that if he's caught, he may spend the rest of his life behind bars. Okay, picking up speed here, approaching a red light, through the red light at 80 miles an hour. So the suspect drives his stolen economy car for all it's worth. Oh, left turn, right past the patrol car, almost into the light bulb. The suspect's car wasn't built for this kind of abuse, screeching wildly around corners and squeezing past stop traffic. Up the right shoulder, very dangerous. The experienced hoodlum knows he can't lose the cruisers or the choppers on normal city streets. So he's going to the one place he could lose them all. Los Angeles International Airport. At this late hour, there is little activity on the ground. But the addition of police and news helicopters is creating an air traffic control nightmare. This pursuit coming very close to restricted airspace. At any point, we may be ordered to leave. With open lanes ahead, the suspect dodges around buses and cruises down the passenger loading zone. Crossing all lanes, He's taking these turns at very high speed. Oh, it's like his own personal racetrack down here. Then the suspect heads down to the lower levels through a rabbit warren of twisting service roads. Passing the control tower now. Knowing that any turn could be his ticket to freedom. But each maneuver pushes the limits of his stolen economy car. Almost lost control again. Oh, almost nailed that bus there. The highway patrol cruisers match him move for move, even into the thick of baggage claim traffic. That's when the suspect reaches the end of his runway. Officers have the intersection ahead completely stopped up. They still don't know if the carjacker is armed. And in this crowded area, the last thing the officers want is a shootout. They have to assume that the suspect is armed and dangerous. 
Then, the suspect makes a desperate decision. Okay, looks like he's going, yeah, over the curb. He's up over the curb. Through the parking lot, wrong way. Oh, almost T-boned an LAPD unit there. Within seconds, the suspect is back into free-flowing traffic, passing police units and blazing through one last bottleneck. Oh, that was another close one. Now he heads back out onto public streets, convinced that he's unstoppable. Now we're leaving LAX, and you can see the LAPD have traffic completely blocked going into the airport, but now there's nothing stopping this guy. The daredevil slingshots out of the busy commercial district, driving his stolen car into the ground. Right through the red light, he's not slowing down. The repeat offender throttles it on the wide open streets, desperate to outrun his potential life sentence. Over 105 miles an hour. But he soon learns that there's only so much abuse his stolen ride can take. Still very high speed, nothing to slow him down. He's weaving. No, there he goes. He is he has completely lost control. The car's tortured front tire blows, sending the suspect into an uncorrectable tailspin. Oh, Spinning around, sparks flying. This is unbelievable. Incredibly, the suspect not only survives a high-speed wreck, he bails out on foot. He's out, running CHP units converging now on his location. He may be injured, but he's still running. That's when the middle-aged hoodlum makes his only wise move of the night. Okay, enough is enough. He's giving up here, he's thrown out, and CHP officers surrounding him, guns drawn. Don't you move, do you understand me? Officers take their positions and move in for the arrest. This wild chase is over. The lesson of this pursuit is clear. A two-time loser will do everything he can to shake his third strike. Oh, left turn, right past the patrol car, almost into the light pole. This man even dared officers to follow him through some of the most dangerous curves in Los Angeles. Unbelievable. Oh, it's like his own personal racetrack down here. But in his red-eyed flight to freedom, he pushed harder than his stolen car could take and bought himself a one-way ticket to disaster. He has completely lost control. Oh, right into the curb, spinning around, sparks flying. This is unbelievable. Livonia, Michigan. Police respond to an attempted store robbery. For being robbed. The suspect got nothing. And when he tried to steal a woman's purse, she fought him off. He's failed twice at being a thief. And now this man is trying to outrun police. Five, three minutes. I think I got him. South and Easter from school crowd. Officers spot his vehicle easily. His truck is spewing a bright trail of sparks. Oh, he's on his rim. Even before officers started their pursuit, this inept crook managed to blow a tire. Heavy sparks in the rim. Seeing police cruisers behind him, the suspect panics, barreling blindly over a curb. Once the suspect returns to the road, he recklessly stomps the accelerator. Then, with police hot on his tail, the suspect makes a desperate and final mistake. He charges through an intersection thinking he can squeeze between two cars. He crashed it, he crashed it. But like everything else he's done, it fails. The truck he hits comes out with barely a scratch, but the suspect's truck is completely demolished. Officers rush in, and the hapless suspect has had enough. He was foolish to attempt armed robbery. He was even more foolish trying to outrun the police. For all of his day's efforts, he gained nothing. In fact, he lost his truck. But police gave him a consolation prize. A free ride in a squad car. We know that every year, 20,000 people are gonna die on America's highways. Thousands more are gonna be injured, and a large number of those could be prevented if someone just wore a seatbelt. 
Turner County, Georgia. Two officers prepare to lay down stop sticks as a pursuit barrels toward them from neighboring Crisp County. I'm at the county line, South Mile. But the suspect spots them and shoots up the exit ramp, dodging the trap. The officers scramble to join the pursuit. Station be advised he's out on the exit ramp. The suspect was spotted not wearing his safety belt. Now he's topping 90, and officers struggle to keep up. Pick it up, he's picking it up even more. About 90 plus. But another set of stop sticks laid down by Sheriff Donnie Sellers does its work. He lost it, he lost it. The suspect's tire shreds, and he loses control. The officers follow his trail across the median. Oncoming traffic grinds to a halt. One 18-wheeler can barely stop in time. There's nothing left of the van but a smoldering wreck. The suspect hits the median too fast and loses control. The back end slingshots around, rolling the van over. The force of the impact throws the driver completely out of the vehicle. Sheriff Sellers hurries to check the suspect's condition as other officers call for assistance. 1080, get some help started. Medics arrive soon after and the suspect is taken to the hospital, hovering between life and death. His only crime was driving without a seatbelt, a $100 fine at most. But this devastating accident broke his neck and left him paralyzed. It's a price he'll have to pay for the rest of his life. Coming up next on Police Videos, ordinary citizens go over the edge. Their first time felons who turn routine procedures into permanent criminal records. Plus, the drunker they are, the harder they fall. In any situation, an officer is continually monitoring. Uh, the emotions of the suspect because they never know when, in a flashpoint, a suspect's anger can explode. Cuesta, New Mexico. Officer C.J. Oskins stops a pickup because the passenger isn't wearing a seatbelt. A simple request for the driver's license leads to the first sign of a hostile situation. Argument. Excuse me? For what? For what? Yeah, what? Step out of the car. Step out of the car. The officer's request for the suspects to exit the vehicle leads to the second sign of trouble, resistance. Step out of the car! Get out, now! It's becoming apparent these people are going to be difficult, so Oskins calls for backup. Request a fourth house. You have a unit in the area. He now gets serious with the suspects. Get out of the car, you'll be arrested for obstructing. When the driver finally complies, the passenger comes around the truck, takes off his jacket, and from his body language, it's clear he's prepared to fight. Don't blow up to me. Well, I'm not. Do not blow up to me. At this point, the officer backs off. But the more determined he is to regain control, the more defiant the suspects become. Are you going to give me your name or not? Yeah, but I'm just telling you. Are you going to give me your name or not? By now, it's evident that the passenger is about to reach the flashpoint. You know what? You know what? What? I'm tired of your stuff. What? The officer attempts to handcuff the suspect, but the suspect has no intention of cooperating. Yeah, you're under arrest for well, disorderly conduct. I'm not disorderly. Hey, I'm not, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being arrested. With being the officer out outnumbered, the suspects have the upper hand, and the situation explodes. The officer quickly extricates himself and draws his baton. Back up! One of the suspects reaches into the truck and wields a shovel at the officer. Drop the weapon, no! Drop it! At this point, the officer steps back and holds his position. When backup arrives, the suspects are finally arrested. Oh, I don't want you touching me. The way you look at it, you're going to jail. But it goes to show how quickly a simple situation can go wrong. Akron, Ohio. Officer Burnett is booking this suspect for aggravated burglary. When the officer asks him to stand, he gets the thousand yard stare. 
the first sign of impending trouble. What are you looking at? The huge suspect squares off, as if looking for a fight. Are you going to cooperate or not? Attempting to defuse the situation, Officer Burnett asks the suspect to sit back down. The suspect refuses. Don't square off. Sit back down in the chair. I'm afraid. The officer tries to take the suspect's fingerprints, but by this point, the man is openly hostile. Don't disrespect me. Don't disrespect me. Seconds later, all hell breaks loose. Officer Burnett's colleagues try to contain the man. Burnett attempts to use pepper spray, but trapped in a confined space, the spray catches everyone. The suspect flails wildly against the stunned officers. He uses the chair as a weapon and forces his way out of the room. Outside, another officer finally brings him down. Converse, Texas. Officers pull over a suspect for an assault complaint. What did I do that caused you to pull me over? The driver seems to be drunk, so the officers ask him to perform a roadside sobriety test. No, you are going to do this. Hey, you know what? I worked hard. Oh, the hell with this. Okay. One, two, three. His tone grows increasingly abusive, gearing himself up for a fight. No, sir, I am not drunk. The officers do exactly the right thing. They call for backup. Whoever you got three and Let me take this truck. Turn down here. Why? Then the officers try to defuse his rage. We do not want to fight with you. The suspect's anger continues to rise. If you, you know what? We're fixing to get it on. Keep the pepper spray boy away from me. Finally, backup arrives. It may look like more than they need. But with this number of officers, they're able to quickly subdue the raving driver without injury to anyone. You understand me? You know what I'm saying? By observing the signs of potentially violent behavior. You know what? What? I'm tired of your stuff. What? And taking a non-aggressive approach. We do not want to fight with you. Officers who find themselves in a dangerous situation can do their job without anyone getting hurt. You understand me? You know what I'm saying? Williamson County, Tennessee. From the outset, this chase has all the elements of an officer's worst nightmare. Traffic is heavy. How about you, Chuck Gargan? Turn you on? And the suspect's Corvette can break a hundred with ease. To make matters worse, the driver is apparently drunk. Before long, it all becomes too much for her to handle. The suspect's vehicle was built to go the distance, but a tiny slip of the wheel sends the car skidding. Sheer momentum slingshots the driver to the left, slamming her into a concrete divider. The suspect's car is now scrap metal, but amazingly, the driver limps away with only a broken foot. And somehow, even though she tore a path across four lanes of traffic, her broken foot was the only injury of the day. Ironically, her original crime was refusing to stop at the scene of an accident. But the decision to run put the driver in the middle of her own accident scene. And this one stopped her for good. Next on Police Video. These fugitives will run anywhere. From backcountry trails. We can't see them. To off-road pursuits. They are chases that will leave you choking in the dust. Next. It's tricky enough pursuing a suspect on well-paved streets, but when a crafty fugitive heads onto rugged back roads, it can put an officer's driving skills to the test. Irwin County, Georgia. Deputy Mark Douglas makes a positive ID on a stolen vehicle. But when he tries to pull him over, the suspect makes a break for it down a narrow country road. 
Officer Douglas closes in quickly. But the suspect searches hard for an escape route that will take him into the maze of backcountry trails. Douglas attempts to stop the suspect before he loses him in the woods. He slams the suspect's rear bumper. But inadvertently throws himself into a violent tailspin. Douglas fights for control on the loose gravel. In that brief moment, the suspect is able to make a clean getaway. And by the time Douglas is back on track, the car thief is long gone. So they're getting out of sight now, we can't even see him. But a trail of dust hangs in the air behind the fleeing suspect. It's just enough to show Douglas where the suspect is gone, deep into the backwoods of rural Georgia. Hey, he's about a quarter of a mile ahead of me. Finally, Officer Douglas catches up just as the suspect reaches a paved road. The deputy again attempts to pull up beside him, moving into position to ram the suspect's vehicle. But the suspect anticipates the move and swerves in front of the officer. The suspect is so intent on eluding his pursuer, he almost rams the civilian head on. Desperately trying to outrun the deputy, the suspect makes a final break for it. But Douglas sees the dirt road ahead and won't be fooled twice. He must stop the suspect right here, right now. And the suspect, knowing it's all over, throws in the towel. If an officer doesn't succeed at first, he tries and tries again. Today, for Deputy Douglas, third time was definitely the charm. It constantly amazes me when I stop a drunk who thinks he can drive a car, yet he can't perform the simple things he learned in kindergarten. Do you know the alphabet? A, B. Okay, well, listen. Right, if you know it, recite it to me, but recite it slowly and clearly, OK? A, B, C. Forget it. A, B, C, E, F, G, H, D, H, A, B, C, D, F, A, B, C. Yeah. 
Common, Ireland. A suspected drunk driver races down an unpaved country lane. Irish police, called the Garda, are in pursuit. Not only does the darkening twilight make it difficult to see, but a recent rain has left this dirt road treacherous. But the drunk barrels on, hardly slowing down to make a left turn. It's a blind curve, and he just misses another motorist. Moments later, he nearly runs off the road. Then, on a downhill stretch, speed and momentum get the best of him. It begins with a skid. Watch the officer's speedometer. On a road better suited for horse and buggy, the suspect pushes it up to 60. With the legendary luck of the Irish, the man survives. This Gaelic chase is a reminder that some things about high-speed pursuits cut across all borders. The terror, the danger, and for the suspect, the consequences. Still to come on police video. Stone cold criminals leave chaos in their wake. From a cop's worst enemy. Yes, I have no reward for shooting that police officer. To a civilian's worst nightmare. You may have crashed into a guy in a wheelchair. These are the criminals They're gonna kill somebody out here. who put your life on the line. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Believe it or not, for some suspects, a crash isn't the worst ending to a pursuit. If they can leave someone else in dire enough circumstances, they can sometimes flee the scene in the confusion. Los Angeles, California. Officers spot a suspicious vehicle. A license plate check tells them the car is stolen. Los Angeles Police Department now in pursuit, very high speed. A local news helicopter shows that the car is packed with teenagers. It looks like as many as four people inside that vehicle. The driver exits the freeway, thinking he can outrun police on surface streets. Those are residential streets down there. The young fugitive races along with total disregard for the consequences of his actions, as if he were playing his favorite video game. Oh, no. No, oh, this guy is not stopping for oncoming traffic. Fearing for the safety of local residents, police back off. But the young driver doesn't slow down. Approaching an apartment complex, he hops the curb and crashes into a fence. And that's when things get really crazy. He crashed the car into the sidewalk. The driver has actually struck a man in a wheelchair, pinning him between the car and the gate. The frightened teen surrenders. Police take them into custody and discover the driver has escaped. Some of the officers attend to the helpless victim. Fortunately, the man was not seriously injured. Other officers fan out quickly laying down a dragnet to catch the runaway driver. Suddenly, the helicopter spots him. That might be the driver. We're not certain that might be him. But nothing is what it seems tonight. The suspect disappears into the dark maze of buildings. Police have sealed off the entire perimeter of the apartment complex. But to the officer's surprise, he casually strolls back into the crowd moments later. Looks like he's walking back to the scene of the accident. When police question him, they learn he's not the driver. But here's the clincher of the night. He does have a warrant out for his arrest. Police have to run him in, 
even as the man they wanted is going free. This is a night these officers won't soon forget. This has just been a very bizarre turn of events we've witnessed here tonight. For now, the driver of the stolen car made a clean getaway, and an innocent victim paid the price. Oh, uh, this is just awful, just awful. But in a world where anything can happen. Looks like he's walking back to the scene of the accident. Police will do their best to make sure that the driver won't remain at large for long. Uh, Rifle Colorado. A reckless driver makes a poor first impression. You know, if, um, you've actually got that vehicle stopped yet. Yeah, firm. My patrol car did. It doesn't take long for Officer Barry Sovereign to figure out what's wrong. Hi. Good evening. The driver is clearly intoxicated. He thinks he has a perfectly reasonable explanation for hitting the patrol car. I guess you didn't know I was going to back up. His drunken logic aside, the man proves to be one of the most cooperative DUIs that Sovereign has ever stopped. Would you follow with your eyes? Don't move your head. Can you do that? Well, I'll try, but I'm not okay. sure. Okay. He gives it his best shot. It's not enough. Oh, wait a minute. Follow your finger. Officer Sovereign realizes that further testing is unnecessary. But even under arrest, the man is unfailingly cooperative. You're under arrest for driving under the influence of alcohol. Okay. Okay. But cooperative doesn't mean harmless. You got any weapons on you? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Well, we'll get it. We'll get it. He reaches for a handgun. The officers stop him. What he says next is a bizarre twist. I just got it back to the it turns out the man had just picked up his gun that afternoon from the police evidence room. Apparently, he didn't learn his lesson from a previous concealed weapons charge. Sovereign is glad to get this guy off the street. Okay, come here. If the man was this dangerous behind the wheel, how dangerous would he be behind the trigger of a gun? It's hard to believe, but there are people in our society who are committed to a life of crime, committed to hurting other people. And those are the people that have no remorse for their actions, but rather still want revenge against society. Detroit, Michigan. Accused cop shooter Gregory Wright gives a terrifying look into the cold heart of a criminal. All I got to say is I have no remorse for shooting that police officer. He got what he deserved. If I had an opportunity to kill him, I'd kill him. He stands defiant before the judge. But when he hears a bond amount of $50,000, the harsh reality of his situation hits home. He bolts for the exit. It takes seven officers to quell his desperate attempt to escape. This is the grim reality officers have to face every day. Suspects who have no regrets, except being caught. Coming up next, on police video, criminal instincts take over when the crook's vision of freedom they're going to kill someone out here. Blinds them to the danger. Everyone suffers the consequences. Sometimes a bad guy will get behind the wheel of a car, which he thinks he can handle. But in reality, it might be too much for him, and it could be his worst nightmare. White House, Tennessee. A liquored up dragster runs full speed from police. This case marks the third time the suspect has been found driving while drunk. But they're DUI, man. They're going to kill someone out here. He knows if he's caught this time, he faces much stiffer punishment than a suspended license. He's going to jail. The suspect, with his souped-up sports car, thinks he has more speed than officers. He punches the gas. But police have all the power he has, if not more. A trooper quickly flanks the suspect's left side. He pulls into the lead, using his squad car as a rolling roadblock. 
The suspect shimmies frantically from side to side, trying to get around the cruiser. And at these speeds, it only takes one minor slip. 1050, 1050, 261! The suspect fishtails, smacking into the cruiser at over 90 miles per hour. Both cars are shot to the side of the road, smashing into a steep embankment. <laughs> Amazingly, the trooper walks away with only a few scratches, but the suspect was ejected from his car and suffered serious head trauma. This driver thought his sporty car could outmuscle, outmaneuver, and ultimately outrun police. But the car itself turned out to be more than he could handle. 1050, 1050, 261! In the interstate war on drugs, America's highways are the front lines of battle. It's out on these thoroughfares where drug interdiction officers are made and sometimes lost. Separating a drug dealer from his stash is a dangerous task. But that's the job of drug interdiction officers. Their beat is a minefield that stretches from coast to coast. Like San Antonio, Texas, special operations officers pursue a drug suspect who flees a botched deal. The stakes are high. In the back seat is an innocent boy who was in the wrong car at the wrong time. Police remain cautious, but the driver is anything but careful. He defies the flow of traffic and barrels up an off-ramp. When the drug suspect literally runs out of road, the police take him down. Afterwards, the boy and his mother have a tearful reunion. As for the driver, officers make sure that it will be a long time before he sees the freedom of the road again. Interstate highways are the pulse of the drug trade. Dealers rely on these roads to move their product. It's a nationwide flow of illegal goods with only a handful of officers to stop it. In police departments around the South, the name Robbie Bishop is almost legendary. Robbie had a uh, special sense in this uh, interstate crime enforcement. Uh, the interdiction work just seemed like he was uh, a mechanical drug sniffer. Dedicated, determined, and fearless, Robbie had a relentless work ethic. Robbie himself done more to take drugs and illegal currency and other criminals off the streets of the United States than any officer I've ever worked with. On January 20th, 1999, Robbie was shot and killed in the line of duty. Ironically, it was supposed to be his day off. The chief had already told him to take the day off, and that he wanted to come in because he was going to be going out of town later on in the week. So he was only going to work for a few hours and come home. Robbie made a traffic stop and issued the driver a warning. But the stop didn't end there. I think there was something in that car that that guy just didn't want to let go of. I think that Robbie pulled him over and he wrote him the warning ticket and then Robbie asked him if he was carrying any drugs or guns or anything like that. Robbie was found shot beside his patrol car. The suspect, Jeffrey McGee, was later caught in Canada and extradited back to the United States to face murder charges. We were able to go back to work because we know that uh, Robbie wanted us to keep going forward and uh, fighting the war on crime. Robbie's wife and two kids struggled to go on, even knowing that Robbie was prepared to pay the ultimate price to make a difference. He's a wonderful person. He's a great dad. He was a wonderful husband. I miss him very much. Next. On police videos, after the perfect heist and an almost perfect getaway, he's going on the field here. An unhinged bank robber comes back for more. Get out of the way! I've seen it time and time again. A suspect on the run gets in the clear and then somehow manages to bungle his own escape. Cottonwood, Alabama. Assistant Police Chief John Vaughn is on the lookout for a bank robbery suspect. 
but it looks like the robber may have gotten away. To his surprise, Bond suddenly spots his fugitive. I got a big one on him now. Headed straight past him. For reasons known only to himself, this bank robber is headed back into town. We're in pursuit. He's gone on 36. Officer Bond edges up next to the suspect. He wants him to surrender peacefully. But the suspect takes the chase cross country, and the officer stays right behind him. He's going off the field here, going out the field. Seeing that his off-road run isn't doing a bit of good, the suspect heads for the street again. Now back on pavement, Officer Vaughn tries to put an end to the absurd getaway. But the police cruiser is no match for the massive truck. It barely budges, even after a second pit attempt by the officer. But what the suspect doesn't know is that the chief of police is waiting up ahead. And by the time the suspect sees the cruiser coming, it's too late to turn away. Gotta hit that cruiser and get out of the way! The suspect hits the chief of police head on, then loses control and skids straight into a power line. But incredibly, he walks away without a scratch. In his attempt to run, this guy managed to total two cars and black out the entire neighborhood. He may have thought he pulled off the perfect height. But his botched escape route drove him straight into the hands of the law. It happens every day. Ordinary citizens step over the line. He has completely lost control. And into a world of crime. The reasons they do it are never simple. If I have no remorse for shooting that police officer. Some think it's the easy way. Some think it's the only way. But the reality is clear. Once you're into a life of crime, hey, we can't break it, no matter how hard you try, there is never an easy way out. <laughs>